Got a lot going on in America, boy. Yeah. A lot of stuff going on in America. I tell you, but the Lord prophesied and said it would. Now, um, we're going to pick up where we left off last week. Let's go back to the book of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And... Okay. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says this. Genesis 1, verse 26. And God said, let us, Genesis chapter, that's the first book in the Bible. It should be no more than four or five pages, all right? If you, don't, if you don't turn 10 pages, something wrong. You got the wrong book or something. All right. Goodness. All right. All right. Genesis chapter 1, um, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Now, here tonight, we want you to look at God said, let us make man in our image, in our act, in our likeness. Do you know that you are not supposed to follow a human being? You, you are not supposed to follow a human being. What that scripture says, and what I'm saying to you wise you're not supposed to follow your husband. And husband, you're not supposed to follow your wife. And each one of you is not supposed to follow each other. The scripture says, God said this, let us make man in our image and in whose likeness? So that means you're supposed to be like God. You're supposed to be not like man, like God. Now we understand the scripture. Paul said, "Like follow me as I follow Christ." But if you're following Paul like you're following Christ, you're not really following Paul. You're following Christ. The problem is when you follow each other. That's what happened when Adam sinned. Adam stopped following God. Adam followed Eve, and in turn. They both follow the devil. You are not supposed, you know, the world, they have their heroes and a lot of sports players, the world try to get the youth to be like them. The world try to make them role models. That is wrong. That is, that's not God's intention. God's intention when he created man, human being, he created us to be like him man and female, to be like him. That's what he created us to be. He didn't create us to be uh, sons, to be like their daddies, or daughters, to be like their mamas. God did not do that. That was us. <laughs> when we, when we were in the, that was the world. The world teaching us to do that. Be like your mama, be like your daddy, and stuff like that. But the whole point is this. If your dad and mom is not like God, then you're not supposed to be like them because you're going to, hell, going to hell anyway. So the whole purpose, God created the human race, race for every person in the human race to be like him. And that's what it says, let us make man in our image, all right, and in our life. Image means our spiritual side. We're going to make them to be like me. To be like him in Christ, all right? Any questions? All right. So he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness, all right? Now, I want you to go to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. So, and that's why you have a better understanding when the Lord leads me to tell people, you shouldn't be following these wicked leaders, you should not be, why? 
God ain't dealing with them. I don't care how many times they saying God did this or God they prayed. They are liars. They are liars. Why? Because any human being that's not like God is not a Christian. No, any human being that is not like God in Christ is absolutely not a Christian. They are an imposter. They are a deceiver. And you're going to see tonight why. You're going to understand better about the righteousness of Jesus Christ, okay? Uh, Philippians, let's see here. <clears throat> Chapter 3. <clears throat> Verse 9, okay? This is what it says. And being found in him, not having what? My own righteousness. This is a, the Holy Spirit using Apostle Paul to write to us, to let us know, just like Paul said, I don't want to have my own righteousness. You and I shouldn't have our own righteousness. What is our own righteousness? Can anybody tell me what, that, what is he saying and not having my own righteousness? Not having my own righteousness. Your way is right. Your way. Your thinking. Your opinion. Anything that you come up with to do that violates the word is your righteousness. It's, your, it's the way you think a thing ought to be done. That's what it is. So Paul says... And being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is what? Of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. Now, wait a minute. He didn't say, get rid of righteousness. He said, there's a certain kind you want to have. The kind we're going to talk about is the righteousness that come through the faith of Christ. Not the righteousness of the law. Or not your righteousness. Period. Because see Gentiles were not under the law. So they, a lot of people think that he's just talking about the law. But he's not only talking about the law. He's talking about your righteousness. What you come up with. You know I think I ought to do this. I think it's okay for a man to tell a lie every now and then. Okay, you know, it's what you come up with. He said, not have it. Because you know what? There's a lot of people today, especially backslidden Christians, some of them wasn't no Christian anyway, that's coming up with things that God told them not to do. For instance, um, you got a lot of these singers that are yoking themselves with the world. And the Bible said, don't. That's, they're walking in their righteousness. Tasha Cobbs or whoever, whoever, whoever it is, William Murphy, when they yoke themselves up with wicked people, they are walking in their own righteousness. When these preachers get up and justify these wicked people, they are walking in their own right. Why? Because the Lord told us to don't do that. He told us, do not allow wicked people. What are wicked people? Give me a simple definition of a wicked person. One that lives different from the word. A wicked person is someone that don't live like the word. Like the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right? That's a wicked person. I don't care if your mama, your dad, or you. You are, you are not saved. If you don't follow the word, you are not a Christian. You're going to find out. You're still in your own righteousness. You know, that's why some folks say, well, I don't believe the Bible. I don't think a man got to do that or a woman got to do that. Well, fine. You don't think it. You walk. The reason why you don't think it is because you are walking in your righteousness. You're not walking in righteousness of God, all right? And there's a lot of these folks go to church and do that, all right? And being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which of God by faith. 
Notice, it's talking about a righteousness, but it's talking about the righteousness of God that come through not the law, not what your mom and dad taught you, or not what you taught somebody, but what the word says. All right? Any questions? All right? So when you see people that do not live according to the word, they are not walking in God's righteousness. They are walking in their own righteousness, and that will not work. All right? Now, I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 6, okay? Ephesians chapter 6. Everybody got it? Okay, verse 5 says, Servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto who? Okay, not with eye service, as what? At, but as the servants of who? Okay, notice it talks about men pleasers. Men pleasers is this. When, when Joe Biden, we use that a lot because everybody knows about this. When Joe Biden says that we're going to make sure that boys and girls participate in the same sports, we're going to make sure that a boy has a right to change to be a woman and a girl has a right to change to be a boy. So in order to please Joe Biden, we agree with him. That's wrong. That's a man pleaser. A man pleaser is when you follow man. When man is not following God. Every, every person that follows another person that do not follow the gospel is called a man pleaser. In other words, you're doing it because that's what man said do. So what you're doing? You're trying to please man. So Paul said, you, even those that, of you that work under people, on your jobs or whatever, whenever they try to tell you to do something against the Bible, you don't have to do it. You do not have to do it. Why? Because your faith in the word gives you the right to obey God instead of man. When you do it, that means you are becoming a man pleaser. Any questions? So if your manager tells you to do something that you know that is against the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you do it, you are becoming a man pleaser. Do you understand that? And you don't have to do it. So you don't have to fear people that get mad at you because you say, I'm not going to do that. Why? That's against my faith. That's against the word. You don't have to be afraid. The matter of fact, the Lord intends for you to stand up like that. Why? Because the Lord don't want you to be a man pleaser because that means you begin to walk in what? The righteousness of who? Man. You begin to walk in the... You know, instead of doing what the word says and walking in the righteousness of God through Christ, you're doing what you say. Or what somebody else say. Well, I know what the Bible said, but I'm going to do different. Well, that means you're walking in your own righteousness. Therefore, that means you cannot please God. Why? Because you're walking in your opinion and not in the word. All right? Okay, let's move on. All right, now, I want you to go to Colossians chapter 2. Chapter 3, rather. Colossians chapter 3. Okay, Colossians chapter 3. It says this in verse 22. Because you know what? Religious people love to use this scripture when they're trying to make someone that's standing on the word 
do something. All right? It says, Colossians 3, verse 22 says, Servant, obey in all things your master according to the flesh, not with eye service as men please us, but in what? Fear and who? Okay. Now, it said probably the same thing that we read before. And what it's saying is, you obey those that's over you, but you don't obey them because of who they are. You obey them because who God is. That means if they're telling you to do something that's against God's word, he said you don't have to do that. You don't have to obey them. He says your heart should be, you shouldn't be torn into, you know what, should I obey them? I know the word, what the word said, the word said do it right, but my manager or my supervisor want me to do it this way. It, it's Okay, the Bible says when you go to work, if you have a policy, if your company have a policy, why do they have a policy or uh, uh, rules? Why? Huh? For you to what? Okay, for you to follow them. So if your supervisor or manager try to tell you to take a shortcut and don't follow them, you don't have to do that. You don't have to, why? Because that means if you do that, you are not following the rules that were set. Why? Because man don't want you to follow them. And so what happens? You end up violating the rule, and most times you don't want to get fired. Most of, you know, years ago when I used to work at SRS, we had, I told y'all this before, when I worked in the lab, we used to have to make different things like, uh, uh, Neptunium, plutonium, uh, different parts of uranium. And there was, uh, to make uh, plutonium, it only took about maybe 10, 11 steps. But to make uh, Neptunium, it took about 20 some steps. And in the steps, you, it took a long time. Why? Because in the process, when you get to a certain level, you had to take the chemical and put it on a drying lamp. You know what a drying lamp is? A, la a lamp where it dries things out. We put them on a plastic plate, put it in there, and it, had, it took about 30, 35 minutes to dry. Depends on what it is. Sometimes it took longer than that. So if we are working there, and it's coming up to, say we work the midnight shift, and it's coming up to about 4 o'clock, which is our big wish time. We want to try to hurry this thing up because we want to get to the lunchroom to play big wish, all right? Because we done talked to ourselves, and I'm going to beat you, you're going to beat me, I'm going to do all that, I'm going to run a Boston on you. So anyway, um, what happened was in um, at uh, the New Mexico uh, lab, Los Alamos, they had some guys that, took a shortcut in the steps and because they wanted to hurry up and get it done to move on to something else. And when they came in that morning, that Monday morning, they found the guys hanging on beams up in the law because it blew up and it killed every one of them. I think about three of them guys. And two of them was hanging off the, the uh, metal frame up there. But what they did, they took a shortcut and the thing exploded. So they sent out a memo to every, uh, every uh, DOE plant saying that if someone do this, they were going to immediately be terminated. Uh, as a matter of fact, they sent us back through class to go through, and we have been doing it for years, to make sure we don't take no shortcuts. Now, for me, they didn't have to send me back to class. That was enough, you know, after then. That was, that, that was going to happen. And the thing about it, we got, we got so, I call it gunshot. We had this guy named Pete, a, a, a big old fat white guy. Matter of fact, he was so fat, he drove a, a Nissan, one of them trucks, small Nissan truck. And you could tell Pete, cause when he was coming out of the road, the truck was like this. <laughs> he driving, 
the truck be lit. That's how fat the guy was. He was coming. Oh, that's old Pete coming down the road. Old green looking Nissan truck. But anyway, Pete, Pete had a habit of going to sleep quick. All right? So when we worked in there, we had these, uh, we call them um, booth, where you sit at this table and had uh, plexiglass, heavy sheets of plexiglass, and it had a little tissue on the, on the end of the glass. As long as that tissue glued to the glass is blowing inward, you had the, the fans, the attic fans, the circulation fans, the heat filters, Fans were working. They was pulling in because you couldn't you couldn't breathe that stuff. So anyway, um, Pete was sitting there about and we had been there a couple of hours, and all of a sudden we heard something hit the floor. And when it hit the floor, we were gone. <laughs> they told us we were gone because we didn't know whether he had dropped a sample plate or whatever. But if that stuff fault come into the atmosphere, it'll kill everybody in that place in a matter of uh, less than a minute. That's how that stuff was, because they had still in a in vacuum. But Pete, he would get there, and he would be, he would hold a vial. You know what a vial is? Who know what a vial is? He'll hold a vial where you're supposed to pull it, pour it into another container. He'll hold a vial and that's why nobody wanted to work with him. Nobody wanted to work with him. You know, people, men will be, they be hollering, screaming, cursing. I don't want to work with this man. But anyway, that's what happens when you take a shortcut. Well, in the word, when you take a shortcut, you're going to lose your life. That means what? You're not going to do what the Lord said do. You're doing what you said do. And what you do is going to kill you. That's, and we did that because we wanted to please each other. Everybody wanted to get to the car again. But after that, nobody did that that we know of after that, after the incident took place uh, then. Well, to be a man pleaser, it means that you are somebody that will lay down what God said. You will lay down your standard of doing right and then pick up somebody else's standard. That's why Jesus came, because God's standard was laid down. And when Adam did what he did, and therefore what happened was, then man himself died. Now, what I want you to do is go to the book of Isaiah chapter 64, okay? Isaiah chapter 64. And to help you understand the difference between man's righteousness, so when these politicians tell you, so when they pass a law that goes against the gospel, Christians are not supposed to follow that law because it's not right. It is not, that's man's law. That's man's opinion. And that's why the Bible says that all Christians are going to be persecuted. Why? Because the world don't understand that man don't have the ability or the authority to come up with anything on their own. Okay, Isaiah chapter 64. Okay, everybody got it? Beginning of verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen, O God, besides thee, what he has prepared for him that waiteth on him. Now what this scripture is saying, you notice it said from what? The beginning of the world. And what it's talking about, when Adam, when God created Adam, all Adam knew was righteousness. So that means, what was Adam doing? Huh? So what was he doing? Following who? Following God. He was, no problem, he was following God. He was following, so he was following after God's righteousness. All right? Okay, now, it says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eyes seen. Now, after he sinned, at the beginning, notice it said the beginning of it. After he sinned, then he lost 
not only his ability to walk in righteousness, but he lost his ability to be able to understand what God had for him. But not only him, the whole human race. Now keep in mind, we're talking about one person, but we're talking about every human being. Every human being after Adam lost the privilege to understand the blessing God had for them. In other words, they couldn't see it. They couldn't understand to the point that I want to do it God's way. Why? That's the best way. They lost that ability, all right? And that's what the scripture means. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard. They lost the ability to hear God. They lost it. Why? Because every matter of fact, God was not just going to communicate with Adam. He was going to communicate with everybody that was born. That, that was God's practice, to fellowship with every human. That's why he created man. He created man so he can talk to man. He created people so he can talk to people whenever he got ready. But the moment Adam sinned and he brought sin into the human race, God couldn't deal, God couldn't deal with man anymore. Why? Because man was defiled. And man didn't have the ability to receive or hear God. It says, for since the beginning of the world, men, men have not heard. Okay. Do you know those of you that don't hear the voice of God, you're in the same state Adam was in? That's, what, that's why Adam stopped hearing. That's why God stopped using Adam. In other words, when Adam sinned, Adam was no longer in charge of the earth. That's why God fired him. Meaning this, he drove him out of the garden. No, you can't live here any longer. Why? If you eat off the tree of, of that fruit, this fruit, the tree of life, you're going to what? Live forever, so I'm going to drive you out. And eventually, Adam died. Adam was supposed to live forever. But all of this came on him. Why? Because he lost his God quality, uh, his godly divine nature that he was receiving from the Lord. But not only that, he lost his ability to receive from the Lord. He lost his ability to do it. And you know what? After then, you never heard, there's no scripture saying that God talked to Adam again. After that, Adam was on his own. After God created the uh, the clothes for him, matter of fact, God said, you're going to live by what? This way to your, y'all remember that, don't you? In other words, you're going to have it hard now. Why do you think God said you're going to have it hard? Because God wasn't with him no more. And those of you that God ain't with you got hard. It's hard. That's why the Bible said the way of a transgressor or what? Because a transgressor, you, you men that make your own decisions, you are a fool. You have no ability to see the end of a thing. Why? Because you don't know the beginning of the thing. You women the same way. All of you that are without God are dummies. And that's why we are not supposed to follow dummies. When you see a dummy, you don't follow a dummy. Why? What a dummy does? Be dumb. <laughs> the purpose of a dummy is to be like a dummy. All right? That's the purpose. So anyway, and that's all over. And even if a dummy come up with something, it ain't right. It, a dummy come up with stuff that is dumb. All right? You will never get anything a blessing out of a dummy. He says he lost the ability to hear. They can't perceive. Neither have eyes to see the glory of God. They don't have the eyes to see the glory of God. Now I want you to hold your hand right there for a minute and go to Romans chapter 1. Let's look at the effect what happened to Adam and why these dumbest that they are doing what they're doing. Romans chapter 1. Lost them. They can't even see. Romans chapter 1. Everybody got it? Verse 19 says this. Because that, that which may be known of God is, is manifest in them, for God hath shown it unto them, 
For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they they that are so they are without excuse. Because when they knew God, they did what? Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart. And what that scripture is saying, that when you see people that actually do not understand the power of God by looking at everything that was created, and they still have a problem with obeying God. You know why? Because they have a problem with believing that God is God. So what they do? They believe in Mother Nature. They believe in Mother Nature. In other words, they don't want to attribute the natural was created by God. So when they said Mother Nature did this, they don't want to give God the credit for doing it. And that's what they do. Why? Because they're blind. They can't see. It says, but that when they knew God, they refused to do what? Glorify him. They did not. Wicked folk have a hard time, no time glorifying God. Those of you that's not saved, it don't ever come to you in, from your spirit to glorify God. You either have to hear it from somebody else. Somebody singing a song, glorify the Father, you do it. But it never comes from you. Why? Because you refuse to glorify God as God. Because if you glorify God as God, you're going to have to realize there's somebody better than you. There's somebody you're going to give an account to, and you really don't want to think like that. You want to go through life smooth. You want to go through life thinking that, you know what, I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. I'm my own, I do what I want to do. That's what you want to go through life to do. Well, you know what? Those of you that even think that way, you know what the Bible said? Your thinking is vain. It's useless. It didn't say you won't think that way. It didn't say you wouldn't fool your mind up that way. But what you're thinking about is foolish. It won't work. He says, but that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was what? Darker means ignorance. Not just wickedness, but they couldn't understand. They could not understand. Now, let me ask you something. If you tell me that climate change did this, you need, to, you need to tell me when the climate change did it. And then tell me how it did it. And then where it started at. Did it start at the North Pole? Or the South Pole? Or did it start when the devil whooped his wife? Well, when, when, if you, if, oh wait a minute, if you tell me something, you, ne you need to tell me how, where, when. You need to be able to tell me all that. How, when it got together. What, even, you know what? Every engine in your car has a date on it when it was put together. It has a place where it was put together at. And a time. So, if you're telling me that climate change is causing all this havoc in the weather, then you need to tell me, did it start on the top of the mountain? Was it in the valley? Well, what happened? Did what the ocean became unbalanced? Was it too many whales on the north? And it pushed the water up on the south? And it flooded? What? Tell me. Tell me something. Let, tell me how, how you say or why you say climate change. And I haven't heard not one of them. And those of you that believe in that stuff, can you tell me? 
if you're going to tell me something, then you to prove a point, you ought to tell me why you saying what you saying. Or do you expect me to believe everything that you said? That's what they do. Their foolish heart became dark. That means they will tell you something and can't explain why they're telling you this. They, they, they were, you know what? I believe the sun, look at it, it's yellow today. You know why? Because it's cheese. It's, you know, it's cheese today. Wait a minute. How you know it's cheese? Have you tasted? Have you, do it smell like cheese? Well, I mean, you need to, you need to tell me something. Don't leave me hanging. I need to know something. If you want me to follow you, you need to fill me with information that makes sense. That's what you need to do. All right? All right. Any question before we move on? That's the kind of society we got today. Why? Because their hearts are foolish, meaning it's ignorant. There's no wisdom. Professing themselves to be wise, they became All right? They became Well, that's what happens when you don't see the Lord, you don't have no wisdom or nothing. Why? Because you are in this world without God. No hope or nothing without God. Okay, now let's go back to Isaiah. He says, <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 64. He's talking about since the beginning of time. Not before the beginning of time, but when the beginning started. Because the beginning of time started right. God did this thing right. God, he did it right, but Adam messed it up. Adam, Satan and Adam messed up what God did, and God is straightening out even now. He says, you don't know what the Lord has prepared for you, for him, that waiteth on the Lord. And we'll get back to waiting on the Lord in a few minutes, all right? Verse 5 says, Thy meet him that rejoices and work is righteous. In other words, what it's saying was, God, if a man did right, God will meet him. God will, meet, God will fellowship with the person that going to do right. But the person that's going to do right, you know, I found out the more joyous people there are those that do right. They are the most, when you come in here, you know, most of the time we can tell well the people are doing right just by the action. Why? Because they be full of joy. When you do right, you always happy. It's when you do wrong that you can't be still. You messed up. Why? Because you know you did wrong. You know your stupid, dog, wicked heart ain't right, and you trying to sit there like you holy, holy. I'm the holy one. No, you ain't. You the one filled with holes. That's what you got. You got a hole. You messed up. That's what you do. Joy, you think about it for a minute. The purpose, righteousness, and joy is married to each other. They're not divorced. They are married to each other. Why? Because righteousness always produces joy, and joy always makes you want to do right. Because righteousness and joy do not come from man, it comes from Almighty God and His Christ. Okay, it says, Thy meet him that rejoice and work righteous, those that remember thee in their ways, the ones that doing what you said do. Behold, thou art wrought, for we have sinned in those, in those is continuance, and we shall be saved. What he's saying is that God is angry for those that sin and in those that continue in righteousness, you're going to be saved. But we are all as, but we are all as what? Unclean things and all our righteousness are as what? Okay. God is prophesying or speaking in the earth through the prophet Isaiah, telling the earth the condition of the human race, that all of you are filthy rags. All of you, 
There was nobody doing right at all. That's what he was saying. Everybody was walking with looking just like a filthy rag. And then he says, and we all do fade as a leaf. We fade away. And our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that call upon thy name that stirs up himself to take hold of thee. Meaning this, there was nobody praying. There was nobody seeking the Lord. There was nobody was saying, I want to do right. I, I want to seek the way. I'm, you know, I'm going to pray. I'm going to call on my God. He says, that stirs up himself to take hold of thee, for thou hast hidden thy face from us and has consumed us because of our need. That's what God did. God, the world got so wicked, Israel got so wicked, God hid his face from them. He stopped communicating with them for a while. All right? Now that's telling me that all of man's righteousness, what they did back then and now, was just what the Bible says, filthy rags. If you try to walk out the people, you're not going to make it ever. You can't make it ever. There's nobody that you that can counsel you to get to heaven except those that counsel through the word and write little by your what you come up with the thoughts that you that I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that that's your way when it goes against the word that's your way I found out this too those of you that want to go against the word you ain't gonna look in the word you ain't gonna check and see are my if my ways like the word, you ain't going to do that. That's one of the first times to show that you're wicked. What? I don't want to read that. I don't want to hear your scripture. I don't want to hear that mess. Don't be telling me about what the Bible says I don't want to hear. Guess what? Guess, you know why you don't want to hear? There's a reason why you don't want to hear. Because you are wicked. You determined to walk in your own way. And you want to walk out your righteousness. But your righteousness can't get you to heaven. So what you do, you get mad. You get mad at the person around you. You get mad at everything, all right? Any question before we move on? Why? Because you don't want to do what's right. When you don't want to do what's right, you sure don't want to hear what's right, all right? Don't be telling me that. Shut up. Don't say nothing to me. Slam the door. Go in your room. He said this. He said the latter part of verse 7. For thou hast hid thy face from us and has consumed us because of our what? Our iniquity. Now, this is showing us what God did. God, you know, God said in Deuteronomy chapter 32, he told Israel, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to step back and I'm going to see what your end going to be. Because you are a forward and rebellious generation. So what God did? God stepped back. He said, I'm going to see. And their end was destruction. They end up losing the whole nation for a while. All right? Any question before we move on? All right. Now, I want you to go to the book of Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And now, let me tell you something. That's a great mistake. That even preachers that preach the word do, that is a violation of the word that they do. And I've heard some men of God that preach the truth, like John Hagee, a few other them that preach the truth. But I saw him do something against the word that violates the word of God. Wow. <laughs> Well, I got your all attention now, didn't I? In the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 1, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for who? Israel. Is they what? When you treat Israel like they saved, you just violated God's word. Israel ain't saved. Israel is not saved. So if you treat a rabbi like they righteous, you violating the word of God. Because Israel as a nation is not saved. Now there are some Jews that are born again, but Israel is not saved at all. 
They are not saved at all. All right? Now, that don't mean that you and I look down on them. There's a reason why God, they still God's chosen people. But it don't mean that those that are not saved going to heaven. I want go to Romans chapter 11. So don't be looking down on them because they are not saved as a nation. Be honest with you, that helped us. If you understand. Romans chapter 11. Everybody got it? Beginning with verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thy being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches, but if thy boast, thy bear is not the root, but the root de de And what it's saying is, God consider us as being a wild olive branch. Or a tree. And Israel was at the original olive. All right? And God, because of their rejection of Christ, God, through Christ, left them and opened up the door for the Gentiles, which is us. All right? To be grafted into what? Salvation. His plan of salvation. So he's telling us in verse 18 don't boast yourself. In other words, don't get pride or arrogant against them, all right? And when I say they are not saved, I'm not saying it to boast. I'm saying they are not saved, but we keep praying for them and hoping. Why? Because one day God going to turn back to Israel. But every one of the uh, Jews that died today and they are not Christians are going to hell. They are not coming back and going to heaven when they live the life of hell, when they reject the Christ. Now, at the end, God going to turn back to Israel, and there are going to be some Jews that's going to be saved. But the ones that's going to be saved are those that become believers in Christ, all right? So you don't boast yourself at them. Now, let's go, let's go back to chapter uh, 10. He says, Brother, my heart desire and prayer to God is for Israel that they might be saved. Why? For I bear them record, they have a what? But what? But not according to what? They are doing, they have a zeal to do something, but it's not in line with God's knowledge. They doing something, but it's not in line with the word. Like you working for a company and you doing something, but you're not doing it according to the rule or the procedure that's supposed to be done. You operating this machine, but you're not operating it the way it's supposed to be done. But you're still doing something. All right? That's what this scripture means. So they have a zeal. Oh, they, they believe. Oh, I, we believe in God. We believe in the law. But they don't believe in Jesus. So what they try to do? They still try to practice the law. So it says they had a zeal for God, but not according. That's what man does. Man has a zeal for God. The Republicans and Democrats have a zeal for God, but when you don't follow God's word, then you're not doing it according to God's knowledge. That's what it means. You're not doing it God's way. Now, who don't understand that? So y'all shouldn't have no problem when you go back out to the world as to, are they Christians or not? Should I obey this or not? If you got a problem with that, you dog. That means you blind, you ignorant, you don't believe the word of God. The word just told us who is and who's not. So it is telling us two types of righteousness. Man's righteousness, which to him seemed right, but the real righteousness is the righteousness of God, which comes through who? Jesus Christ, all right? So he says, for our brethren record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. It's kind of like somebody get up and pray. They pray. And they instead of praying in faith, they just get up there. Most holy and all wise. The heavens were created by thy hand. The sun stands still. They, Wait 
wait a minute. I thought you were praying. And then you just went, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And some of them slip up and say, while they praying, preach. Preach. And every one of you been exposed to that if you ever went to a church. A Baptist church or some other church. That's what they do. And the thing about it, they had a zeal. Baptism in water. And it was said that water baptism saved you. That was a zeal of man, but it was not the zeal of God. In other words, no, the Bible says water baptism cannot save a soul. It'll put you in right standing with God if you are born again to start with. So what they did, they were teaching stuff with a zeal. But it wasn't right. It was not right. It, you know, they, they, they even sang songs. I went to the water, baptized, and came up a new creature. No, you didn't. If you wasn't a new creature when you got in there, you came up, you was the same old lying devil you were before you got in there. You just wet now. That's all. You need to dry off. But those things that they were teaching us was not right. But the thing about it, a lot of people believed it and they died and went to hell believing that. Why? Because they wasn't saved. How, why, why you believe you saved? Because I've been baptized. I've been baptized. I joined the church. The Bible, the Bible didn't say being water baptized and joining the church was going to save you. It did not. But that's what y'all we grew up with. I heard it. And the only way you didn't hear it, you didn't go to church. You didn't. You was a, a devil time heathen. I mean, you was out there in the world. You, you was the heathen of the heathens. That's what you were. And in a sense, that was good to some of it because you wasn't poison. But, you know, all this stuff that they were telling us was not right. This thing about Christmas is not right. This thing about Easter is not. The, the, the rabbit, people, leave the rabbit alone. Won't you let the right rabbit alone? Leave him alone, all right? And you know what? I have never seen a chocolate rabbit. See, all of this stuff they doing is the man's zeal. Every one of these churches that you're going to see that's going to celebrate Easter and the egg, that's man's zeal. That's not God's will. That God don't do that. That's, that's man's righteousness. What man have done, man that implement, implemented his law, his traditions over the word of God and made the word of God void. And it's not right. Well, that's what the Jews did. Paul said, you got a zeal for God, you know, but what you're doing ain't according to his word. It's not according to God's knowledge. It's not according to the knowledge of the word. Any question? Now, we know y'all understand. All right. Now, let's, he says... For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being what? Okay, so I walk in the Bible shop and these four fools talking about stuff. I say, you know what, they're ignorant. Even if I don't tell them. If you hear somebody saying stuff against the word, then you know if you believe the word immediately, they are ignorant. Meaning this, they have no idea what they're saying. Even though they are running their mouth, what they are saying is vain. It's useless. Why? Why is it useless? Anybody? It's not right. It don't line up with the word. He says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto what? Okay, so it just told you why they're ignorant. They have not given in to the righteousness of who? God. So if you're not walking in the righteousness of God, who righteousness you walking in? Your own. Your own. So how are you going to get to heaven walking in your righteousness? How are you going to get there? 
Because remember, you never been there. So how you going to get there? How do you know how to get to heaven if you've never been there? That's why, oh, he going to heaven. When, when did you get back? Did you, did, what, did you see him? Did they get on the bus when you got off? What, did you catch him at the airport? Did you wave at him? When, I want to know when, if you tell me Jack so-and-so went to heaven, I need to know what time he arrived. I need to know how he got there because I want to go there too. So if he went up there, I'm going to do what Jack did. I'm going to jack myself and go up there. <laughs> I'm going to follow Jack. That's, that's what I'm going to do. This, let me, I want you to go to the book of St. John for a minute. Go to St. John chapter 8. St. John chapter 8. Yeah, if you don't got, you, you've been up there, then tell me so I can do what you did to get up there. Because you know. Listen to this. Jesus says something in St. John chapter 8, and it's just what I just told you. St. John chapter 8, all right? St. John chapter 8. Everybody got it? Begin in verse 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and shall not. You shall, and shall die in your what? Where I go, you cannot. Then said the Jew, will he kill himself? Because he said, where I go, you cannot come. Okay, so what you go? Because what they were saying, they thought they was playing a game with it. Okay, we ain't going to kill ourselves. That's what, we, anywhere else you go, we're going to go. And then Jesus said this. He said, you're from beneath. I'm from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. What he was saying to them, listen. I came down. So if I came down, I must have been up there. You have never been up there. So if I've been up there, don't you think I know how to get back? Now you've been, you've been on this earth all your natural born life. And I came down, so I should know how to get back. But you been down and never been up there. So how in the world are you going to know how to get up there and you never been up there? But I'm telling you, I've been up there, so don't you think I ought to know how to get back? He said, I said therefore unto you that you should die your sins. He said, you ain't going to be airborne. <laughs> Why? Because you don't know how to get up there. You do not know how to get up there. Now, go back to verse 21. He said, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and shall what? That's why they ain't going to get up there. Because they were sinning. They were living in sin. They were living. He said, the reason why you ain't going to get up there, because you don't know how to get up there. Why? Because you're a sinner. You're wicked. You ain't right. There's no righteousness in you. But I know how to get up there. Why? Because I'm right. And the reason why I was up there because I was. And the reason why you're not up there and you're not going up there. Why? Because you're not right. So how in the world you think you're going to get up there now? I say therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall. Now wait a minute. Jesus is saying. That the reason why you're sinning, because you don't believe I'm the Christ. So wait a minute. If I don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, then I am a what? Because I am sinning. All right? Now, I want you to go, let's go to, let's see here. Let's go back to Isaiah 64. Any question for we? Now, you need to understand that when Adam sinned, Adam kept on living.
He kept on doing things in the earth. It just got harder. And Adam kept walking in man's righteousness. Meaning he was not following God anymore. He was doing what he thought was best. All right? Not receiving the counsel of the Lord anymore. Because it was when the only time men begin to call upon the Lord is when Seth was born. And then men, men, some men start seeking the Lord again, all right? Now, back to Isaiah 64. God said this in verse 7 again. And there is none that call upon thy name that stirs up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hidden thy face from us. God is saying, wait a minute. Now, I created Adam. And there was a time Adam, representing the human race, had nothing but godliness, God ways in him. Always looking for me. Excited by looking for me. But by the time we get here, man don't even have a desire to seek my face. They don't have a it, it don't even enter their mind to pray and call on my name. From the time I created man and gave him all wisdom, life, everything, until now man have come become to a state where they had no desire at all to call on me. But they were still walking in life. They were still eating, drinking. They were still going to work. They were still creating things. All kind of stuff they were doing. Normal things. But one thing they were not doing is following me. And the reason why they wouldn't follow me, says God, because they had no desire to follow me. They had no, there was no hunger and thirst for righteousness. There was no hunger and thirst to say, Lord, I want to know you. There was none. Why? Because man had gotten that state. But man had replaced me with his own wisdom, with his own mind. That's why the Lord said through Solomon, there is no wisdom or counsel against God. Why? Because, see, man, you got your own wisdom. Every one of you that's not born again, man, male or female, you got you walking in your own wisdom. And you know what? It's going to mess you up. Why? Because your wisdom cannot defeat the devil. Your wisdom cannot overcome the elements that the devil has for you. Why? Because if it did, the Lord wouldn't have sent his word. You don't know how to live. So in your life, you, you have it harder in your life than a righteous person. Why? Because a righteous person is seeking counsel from on high. A righteous person is actually following the word. They're not walking in the, their wisdom. They're walking in God's wisdom. But what you're doing, you're walking in your own wisdom, which is going to end up keeping you where? On earth. Remember what Jesus said? He said, I came from above. You here. Your wisdom is going to keep you destitute, broke, blind, dumb, ignorant, having a hard time, and then turn around and die and go to hell. Why? Because you didn't have the wisdom of God. You're going to struggle in your life. Why? Because I want to do it my way. I want to have it my That's what you're going to do. I want it my way. That's, that's your attitude. I, you know it violates the word, but I want it my way. And some of you, like that baby that's sitting in the high chair, and the parent give them a bowl, a meal, and they take it and throw it all on the floor. I don't want this. Kicking, I don't, you hurting your own self. I don't want this. That's what. Any question before we move on? Why? Because you want to do it your way. And your way going to get you to hell. He says, for thou hast hid thy face from us and have consumed us because of our what? It's your, the Bible says he that sins, sins against his own soul. You don't want to go get messed up. 
You see a bright future. Oh, you know what? In my way, I'm going to have a better life. Why? Because I'm going to do it my way. I got an idea. I'm, I want to do it. I'm tired of doing it the Bible way. I want to do it my way. Why? Because I think my idea is better. And you, you feel good about it. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get up and do it until you fall flat on your face. <laughs> That's what happens to the human race. But it's about, you act like Joe Biden. Everything is good. There's no infl inflation is coming down. Yeah, when you done took it up to nine points. And it dropped down to six. Before you got in office, it was only two. So the right thing to do in order for us to get it back to two, get him out. Get him out so we can get back to two. We all rather deal with two than six. That's what he does. You, when, when you're wicked, you jack everything up. And then once it come down, it's doing good now. Yeah. Look at how you got it. That, that's the way the wicked thing. That's the way the wicked thing. <laughs> you know, it's like this. You ain't got no food. You ain't got no money. You got $10. Instead of going buy food, you go and buy a pint of liquor. I'm going to get high. Oh, reef, I'm going to get high. But after you get high, what you going to eat? What you, 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 you're high and you're hungry now. And the thing about it, high don't last. High bring you down, now you're hungry and you're depressed. And then what's your next move? Steal. And now you was high, depressed, now you incarcerated. Can you get me out of jail? No. Stay in there. If you stay in there long enough, you'll get a meal. You better eat because you ain't getting nothing for me. That's right. It's amazing. Well, you know what? It's because they're thinking, but their thinking is messed up. It ain't right. That's why these, you know, they was talking about all these folks on drugs and stuff like that. Now, it's wrong to bring drugs fitting all around this country. But you know what? The folks that's taking it is wrong. Why? Because they think it's going to make them feel good, and it don't. It kills them. It wipes them out. In other words, they die. If you want to get high, get high on Jesus. Get high on the Word. Something that won't kill you. All right? Any other questions before we move on? I'm high. So what? I'm high. Ain't got no job, but I'm high. Why you ain't got no job? Because you're high. Jeez. Come on. Ain't got no employment. Why? Because you're high. Jeez. It's like, man, that's stupid. It don't make no sense. It do not make no sense what these folks do. Why? Because they are walking in their own righteousness. For me to have a better life, get high. But the thing about it, when you get high, you know what you don't do? You don't have a better life. What you do, you deceive yourself, and once you come down, you find out that you worse off. Why? Because now you done come down, and you ain't got nothing to get you up, and you're hungry. It's like, man, come on. It's it don't make sense. But you know what? When you're walking in your own righteousness, it don't make sense. It do not make sense. It do not make sense. It do not make sense. All right? Any question before we move on? We're just going to tell you the truth. All right, now let's go to Philippians chapter 3 again. Back to Philippians chapter 3. Now, man, the human race, is messed up. Without the Lord, it's totally messed up. I don't care where you go, it is messed up. It is really, that's why we are going through the stuff we're going, this country is, because it's messed up. You got people in leadership that's simply messed up. They've been doing their own thing, walking in their own ideas. Well, how you know when you walk in your own ideas? It messes up. People, if you, okay, 
Well, why I keep messing up? You walking in your own ideas. Well, why my own? Why do my ideas don't work? It's messed up. You know what? Why the light is out? Why is the light not shining? It's out. If you change the bulb, if you change your ways, Philippians chapter 3. All right. Begin with verse 7. It says this. But what things gain to me, those I count what? Lost for who? Lost for Christ. So Paul is saying, okay, Paul had it made as a Pharisee. How you know? Because Paul was one of the head Pharisees. How you know that? Because he said he was a Pharisee above the Pharisee. That means Paul had a lot of clout a lot of authority, a lot of wisdom with man. The problem was, it was man's wisdom. It was man. Paul wasn't Pope. Paul was a very, very, out of the 12 apostles, Paul was the most educated apostle there was, even more than Matthew and Luke. All right? And Luke was a physician. He says, but what things were gained to me, those I count Lost for who? So Paul is saying, wait a minute. I came to a place of understanding when the Lord knocked me off, when I fell off that horse, when I, the Lord changed my life, that everything I had was just useless. It don't mean he didn't have stuff, but he compared it to Christ. All the valuable worldly stuff he had. Authority, everything else. But when he compared it to Christ, he says, you know what? That ain't nothing but dumb. That's the only term he could come up with. Why do you think that's the only term Paul would, could come up with? Because he had got saved. Paul had truly be, been converted by the Holy Ghost. When you are converted by, when you are born again Christian, you realize everything in this life is done. And you don't, you stop chasing after money, and most of the time money chases after you. And you don't pay no attention to it. Why? Because you're chasing after him. Everybody that chased after money end up broke. Everybody. I don't care whether you're a billionaire or whatever. Why? Because see, one thing about money, it can't keep you alive. And when you die, you cannot take it now, wait a minute here. If you died, that means you never lived anymore. It would be all right if you leave here broke. But when you leave here, you ain't going to die. And you ain't going to take the money with you. So you're going to end up in hell broke. That's why the scripture says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world in your end you can't take it with you? When you become a Christian, you stop chasing after money and you start chasing after. That's what Paul did. Paul, start, Paul started chasing after Christ. He left worldly education because he really became a born-again believer, and he saw that, you know what, being a Christian is better than being a philosopher or a professor. He saw that. He said, wait a minute, I don't found life. I don't need to have a better life, not in the world. 
I want to have a better life in Christ. Why? Because he's born again now. He's really, really born again in his spirit. Why? Because the end of his life is Christ. And this is what he said. Yet doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of what? Now, wait, notice he said the knowledge. I want, wait a minute, what knowledge he is saying? He was, go back, back in uh, St. John 8, the Lord had told him where he came from. He was saying, I want to know how he came down here and how he get back up there. I, I want the knowledge that Jesus had, I want it. Why? Because I want to get up there. And nobody has that knowledge but him. Why? Because he's the only one came down. I don't care who you believe in, yourself or whatever. You've never been to heaven. But he has. So if you want to get, not, get up there, why not talk to the person been up there? Why talk to everybody else on the earth and nobody been up there? Paul ain't here. Paul said I was caught up in the third heaven, but Paul ain't here. Matter of fact, it's Paul talking. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's, it's amazing how we, you can trust in each other and don't even trust in the word. He said, wait a minute. Paul said, you know what? I let all that stuff go because you know I found out that being rich ain't it. But knowing how to get up there, that's it. Knowing how to get, not guessing, not hoping, but actually knowing how, okay, Jesus, how you did this. I want to know how you got up there. I want to know everything you know so I can get up there. Because you know what? I, I don't want to be down here when all hell break out. I want to be up there. So I want to know what you know, Jesus. I don't want to know what Ananias came for us. None of them. I want to know what you know. Why? Because I want to know your knowledge. He says, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of he, the excellency of the knowledge of who? When he said, There's nothing better than knowing you and knowing how you do a thing. No, how I want to know, Jesus, how God let you get up there. Because I want God to let me get up there. I'm, I want to know every I, every T, every dot, everything you know to get up there. So I'm, I, I want to follow you. He's saying, for whom I have for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them That I may what? He said, I done lost everything. I can't even go back home. I, I, can, I cannot pick up where I left off in the world. But then he said, I ain't worrying about it. Because I got somebody better. I got a better way. Why? Because see, here I might be here another 30, 40 years, but there I'm going to be forever. I'm not going to hell because I stayed in the world. Because I decided that my job of making money was more better than Christ. Or I thought being a clout or whatever in the world was better than Christ. No, I want to go to heaven. I want to, so I want to know, Jesus, what you know. He says that I may win Christ. That I may win Christ. You know, so that's why I thank God that that happened to me where they told me, you're a fool leaving the planet. But you know what? That's the best thing I did was follow Christ. I, I don't regret it at all. Not at all. And folk, the Lord is exactly who he said he is. And his promises are exactly what he said it was when you become a servant of the Lord. That means you do what he said do. He says, and being found in him, not having what? My, 
I don't want to come. You a fool to come up with your, well, you know what? I'm going to do this. You hadn't even prayed. You want, I, you know why those of you that don't acknowledge God in prayer, because you know what you're doing is wrong. I heard from God, but the outcome was wrong. Wait a minute. I thought you told me you heard from God. God he gave me a sign. And the sign was in my mind. And now I feel like I'm behind. And I lost all time. Falling after a sign. I have nothing. Well, he didn't give you the sign. It's amazing how people, you know what? God told me to do this. And then you find out. He didn't tell you to do it. <laughs> it's amazing how folk come to an abrupt end. Being ashamed and embarrassed. But you know what? You're supposed to be ashamed and embarrassed when you walk in your own counsel. Why? That's what it leads you to. Because of your pride. Any question, but we move on. All right, we're moving on then. And being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of who? Right. The righteousness which is of God. Right. Now, oh, okay. So we're not talking about the righteousness of the law or the righteousness of men that's filthy, rags. But we're talking about a whole different righteousness now. And it's the righteousness of God in Jesus. Oh, so there's a third way, which is the best way. He says, that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And this righteousness, that I may know him, and wait a minute, okay. So this righteousness will help me to know him. Okay, wow. So I need to get in this righteousness. Hmm. I need to find out what this righteousness is so I can get in it, so I can know him, and not only him, but the power. Because the other righteousness is not going to get me there. My righteousness, righteousness of the world, whatever. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Okay, so what you're telling me is that there's another righteousness that I can get into that's going to help me to know the God of righteousness, which is the God of faith. Now I want you to go to the book of Romans, chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Why God sent Jesus. And that's why, whether you believe me or not, let me tell y'all this. Every preacher Every one of you that go against the word, you're going to die and go to hell. Every last one of you, every last human being that do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ is not only vain, wicked, dog, and having a hard time, but they're going to have a harder time when they leave here. So, God knew. God said, you know what? I turn my back on man. I'm not going to deal with man anymore. But God's love was so strong, he knew he had somebody else was. In the book of Romans chapter 10, 
beginning with verse 4. Well, let's go back to verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to See, when you don't follow the word, that means you don't have the knowledge of God because you ain't following the word. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their what? Oh, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do, I'm, I am going to have fun doing what I want to do. I'm going to live for me now. I'm going to do what I want to do. I just, I'm, I am going to do what I want to do. All right. You're going to do. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto what? The oh, so there's a righteousness of God that you can submit yourself to that will lead you in the right way and cause you to prosper. Then he says, for Christ is the end of the law. For what? To everyone. Wait a minute. So you're telling me that if I believe in Jesus Christ, if I believe in Jesus Christ, then that's going to get me involved into God's righteousness, which cannot fail. Why? Because I believe in Jesus Christ. If I believe what God said about Christ, if I believe that God's righteousness is Jesus Christ, if I believe that God's right, not man's righteousness, not the world, but if I believe that God's righteousness is Jesus Christ, then I'm going to be in better shape and my end is going to be better than my beginning. Why? Because I'm walking in his righteousness and not my right. Any question? All right, let's move on. He says, now, verse 6 says this, but the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, who shall bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what says it? The word is nigh thee. Oh, wait a minute. So you're telling me that God's righteousness, having access to God's righteousness, is believing that Christ is not the Savior because he up there. Or believing that Christ is not the Savior because he's down there. But believing that cause his word. His righteousness is his word. So if I believe his righteousness is his word, I'm going to treat his word, I'm going to treat his word like I'm going to treat him. So that means I don't need to Bring Christ down. Christ, I don't need you to come down to talk with me like God did Adam. All I need is because the word is closer to me than you are. All I got to do is believe it and walk it out. But I got to believe it in my heart. And I can't do that on my own. He says, but what says it? The word is nigh thee, even in thine heart and in thine, in thine mouth and in thine heart. That is what? Which we were. 
So if I am walking in the righteousness of God, I am believing what Christ preached. So I don't really need to see Christ to believe. If I'm a Christian, I believe because of what I heard. What I read in the word. Why? Because the word is in me. It's in my. I just believe the word. So if I believe the word. There's some things that's going to happen. When I believe the word. Alright. He says this. Then he says. Which is. Preach. Now. Wait a minute. The word. Of faith. Which is. Then he tells you what the word is. That if thou shalt confess with the mouth, the, he's telling a human being how to get into this. If you speak with the mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you make him the Lord, Lord, from this point on, I want your word to be my God. I want your word to be my ruler. I want your word, I'm going to believe everything you said in your word. I don't care what man, nation, condition, whatever says. I'm going to believe everything you said in this word. Matter of fact, I'm going to believe it, so I'm going to put it in action. So if a nation or a kingdom rise up against your word, I'm going to die believing your word. I'm not going to allow myself to be influenced by no man, woman, jack leg, or whatever. I'm going to believe. I'm not going to even allow my thoughts. To go against your word. If, your, if my thoughts go against your word, I'm going to pull them down by your word. I'm going to take the word and pull down all imagination and every high thing that I saw itself in my mind, I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to say, get in line with the word. Why? Because I believe your word. I believe, Lord, I don't need you to show your face to believe. I just believe what I read. So I'm going to stand on it. He says, the word is not even that if thou confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine spirit that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why? For with the heart, with your spirit, man believes to what? Wait a minute. With your heart, with your spirit, when you believe in your spirit, that gives you access to righteousness. That gives you the ability to begin to know about the knowledge of Christ, which is going to get you up there. Why? Because his knowledge is righteousness. He says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto what? With the mouth confession is made unto... So wait a minute. All I got to do is speak with my mouth. And then once I speak with my mouth, then that's going to help me to be able to flow in the things I need to flow in. That's what it's going to do. All right? So wait a minute. So Lord, you're telling me that if I just believe, and if I'm believing right, then righteousness is going to enter me and righteousness is going to make me the righteousness of God because of Christ. Why? Because it's in me. So if righteousness is in me, well, okay, one thing I found out about good food, good food not only fills you up, but it makes you hungry too. If it didn't make you hungry, you wouldn't eat no more. Bad food, you might get hungry, but bad food. The righteousness of God, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, I want you to look at verse 6. The reason why 
Those of you, there's a reason why you're not righteous. Those of you is not righteous. Because in Matthew 5, verse 6, it said, blessed are those that what? You're not hungry. Okay. When you are not a Christian, you don't hunger for righteousness. Why? Because you're not a Christian. You haven't been born again. The desire to crave righteousness only comes from being changed by the Holy Ghost. By being made the righteousness of God. How? Through Jesus Christ. So, those of you that don't do right, it's because you don't have the ability to hunger for what was right. Or what is right. So that means you are not blessed. Why? Because the scripture said, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Not those that don't, but those that hunger and thirst after right. The Bible says that you're blessed. That's what the scripture says. Now, I want you to go, before we close tonight, we'll pick up your next one. I want you to go to the book of Proverbs. Chapter 14. For those of you that's not concerned. Those of you that are not going to waste your time with the word. Proverbs chapter 14. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 that 27, it's appear, it appear unto me once to die. After that, every human being I don't care whether it's the Pope or somebody on dope. Every human being put him in the same category. Because he high on himself. Every human being go die. You gonna die, I'm gonna die. We just don't know when we're gonna die. But we know that's a one appointment we can't cancel. And you can't postpone it. You can't put it off. You can't say, Lord, I'm sick today. I don't want to die like this. Wait till I get well. Or wait till I finish getting rich. Wait till I finish completing my desires. Wait till I finish chasing after the God of mammoth. Because I love riches more than your word. Now, in the book of Proverbs chapter 14, when you walk in righteousness, this is what it says. The wicked is driven away, verse 32, in his wickedness. But the righteous has hope. Now, I don't care what folks say. Righteousness Always give a person a better or the best advantage. If I'm going to die, I want to die in righteousness. Why? Because I got hope. So that means I'm not afraid to die. I'm not shaky. I'm not trying to hold on. I'm not trying to get another day or whatever, hour or whatever, because I hadn't been living in righteousness. Every person that dies without Christ died without hope. But every person that died with Christ, they have a good feeling. They, they, in other words, righteousness produces a good feeling at death. Because hope is a good feeling. That what you want, good, is going to happen. 
So God said, you ain't dying by yourself. You're carrying something not with you, but you're carrying something in you. You can't take nothing with you, but what you got in you is enough. Is enough. You know, <laughs> I heard the devil say to me one day, Why you don't like going to funerals? I told the devil, I ain't going to mine. <laughs> now, so some of you think you're going to your funeral. I ain't going to my funeral. I am not going to my funeral. You can go all you want them. You can dress up, but I ain't going to be here. I don't care what you say, because I ain't going to be here. I don't care what you think, because I'm not going to be here. I don't even care whether you like me or don't. I am not going to be at my funeral. So I ain't going to make a fuss at my funeral. Because I'm not going to be at my funeral. And if you leave here for me, I ain't making a fuss at yours. Somewhere your body going to be in the ground. Or cremated or whatever you want. It's up to you. But I am not going to be at my funeral. And you know what? He didn't say nothing else. Because it was the truth. Now, when you dare, when you're doing right, is the next level of hope. Why? Because your battle is over. I don't have to deal with hypocrites. I don't have to deal with liars. I don't have to deal with those of you that. I don't have to look at your eye cutting anymore. I don't have to deal with none of that. I am gone. I left the building. I argue over what you want to argue with. That's your problem. I'm gone. <laughs> Put me in a croaker sack. I ain't gonna argue about it. I'm gone. Throw me in a ditch. I'm gone. I am gone. And I'm gone with the best thing I got. Hope. Hope. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. And what that scripture means is God going to drive all you wicked folk away from him. And guess where God is not at now? Guess where Jesus is not at now? In hell. He left there. Jesus, he's in heaven. He know what's going on in hell, but he ain't there. So that's one person you won't meet. Not there. You will, Why? Because he is not there. Now I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 11 before we close tonight. Those of you that don't want to do right. Those of you that refuse, I am not going to follow the word. I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. I do what I want to do. I know what the word said, but I ain't going to do it. Proverbs chapter 11 says this, verse 7. When a wicked man dies, his expectation shall the hope of the unjust man. So, these folk that die and haven't lived right, do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. In 
no matter what people fuss over them. And some family will get hot, boy. They put the wrong hat on them. They dressed them in the wrong tie. They did this. They did that. They didn't fix his face right. Well, he was ugly all his life. What can you do? The man dead. <laughs> what you want to do? Look like a, a fresh cherry? A spring chicken? It's over. When you start dying, it's over. In other words, you won't be putting on your makeup no more. Makeup don't matter. When you understand about death, you don't mind talking about it when you're right. You know why? Because you got hope. You know that it's going to get better. I don't have to listen to, well, I'll probably hear him, but I won't be under Joe Biden control. I, I, I don't have to pump gas anymore. I don't even need gas anymore. Debt, when you're doing what's right, righteousness produces a hope inside of you where you like, Paul, I'm ready to go. Matter of fact, you know what? Right now, Paul said, I'm torn between whether to be with Christ, which is far better than to hang with you. But what's more needful right now is here. But Paul made sure that people knew Christ was better. And I found out, those of you that walk in righteousness, you're glad to see him. Those of you that think, you don't want to see him. When you know in your heart you ain't doing right. When you know you got a wicked heart, you ain't right. You just say, you are a devil. You don't want to die. Because all devils perish. You, you want to live life to the fullest. And there's no joy in thinking by heaven because you're not right. But when you know that you have lined yourself up with the righteousness of God, which is his word, it don't bother you at all. You enjoy talking about it. Why? It's the future. It's the future. You know what some of y'all do? You work all the time. And then you, I'm going to take a vacation. And you get joys when you're going to take a vacation. Oh, I'm going away for a few days. I'm going out of town for a few days. All oh, your spirit just perk up. Perk up. Well, why don't I do that when you think about heaven? <laughs> Is it because that's a trip <laughs> that you ain't going to make? Because you know that's a trip that you ain't scared you to make. <laughs> you get that old sour look. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you, God, for his word. That trip, you know you ain't going to make that trip. Why? Because you know where you at. Now, it don't have to be like that. You can get yourself right by going to the Lord and letting his word get you right. There's the righteousness of the law and then there's man righteousness and then there's God's righteousness. Don't fool yourself. When you don't walk in God's righteousness, it's because you ain't right. When you don't walk out this word, because you are not walking in God's righteousness. To be continued. In other words, 
We're going to move out of there. We're going to be back here next week talking about God's righteousness versus yours and man. So when you know you're not doing right, you know you're not walking out God's righteousness. When you're not following this word, go to Romans chapter 1 before we close. Come on. Let's go. And we all going to leave here one day. Every last one of us. We're going to leave here and we're going to see our maker. Lord Jesus. The righteousness of God is in Jesus the Christ. Paul said it this way. He said, verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not disappointed in the gospel of Christ. For inside the gospel is the power to give me hope. The power to help me not to be afraid. The power of God to save to everyone that believe to the Jews first and then to me why cause in it in what in this is God's righteousness and that's what's going to get us to heaven any questions about righteousness of God. He ought to think where you really at. Where you really at. And if you ain't walking in this word, it's because you're not walking in God's righteousness. You're walking in your own. And that ain't, that's not enough. Because your righteousness is just like filthy rags. My righteousness is just like filthy rags. That's what it's like. That's what it's like. Who's out there in that for you? I said, what now? Oh, okay. Any questions? All right. Praise the Lord. No, everybody understand about God's righteousness, not man's righteousness. That's why all these folk going to hell that do not walk according to this word. And that includes you or me. So I'm going to walk out the word. I'm, I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to talk about, teach about, preach about, have hope in the word. No matter what rise up, I'm going to stand on the word. And I'm going to keep my joy. I'm going to walk in my joy. It ain't yours, it's mine. If you ain't got yours, that's your problem. You see. All right, we're going to have our announcements, and then we're going to let you all go. Did Anthony, where's Anthony?